the wave, like wave in the ocean. Ah. That was, I think, a book that a teacher wrote based on real events in mm. America. And then they made some American TV movie from it. And mm. then they remade it in Germany because of the oh. Nazi context and everything. Yes. And we just rarely do movies. Mm. Actors need a job, I guess. <laughs> um, and it turned out pretty decent because they uh, made it more violent and that worked a lot better because it made the situations more drastic. Mm. And it really shows how within a week you can make uh, high schoolers become this wannabe elitist force who's willing to use violence on people who think differently or who don't want to be part of their group. Ouch. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's interesting. <laughs> sounds pretty heavy, but it sounds good. It sounds very interesting. It's, it's how, really good. It's really yeah. good. Because uh, well, I mean, you shouldn't be squeamish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially not around the end. Yeah, I've heard about how people can be uh, thought reformed very quickly, like with the um, religious cult, the Moonies. The way people have gone to them and they've become involved in just one week, and by the end of the week, they're. A we should all be Jesus. <laughs> we should. Uh, well, yeah, if, you, if, you, if you if you if you go by Discordianism, you can be a pope. Yeah. Yeah, Discordianism is the. Uh, it's a, I think it's a, the book called Principia Discordia. Hmm. Uh, the only tenets of of the religion. Is, it, it's it's kind of a joke, but it, I mean it 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 has a, it's it's kind of funny in a way. Uh, every person is a pope. And but not everybody's a saint, and the only way that you can become a saint is if a pope makes you a saint. Okay, uh, that's really and, <laughs> screwed and, up. And, and the other thing, the only thing that you cannot do is you cannot eat. I think hot dog buns on Friday. It's either Friday or Saturday. <laughs> you can't eat hot dog buns. Well, it's pretty bizarre. Eat hot dogs anyway. No, it's okay to eat the hot dog, just not the hot dog bun. Oh, uh, for me, that a hot dog is like the entire concept. Mm. Because otherwise, it's just a bun and a sausage, you know. <laughs> Becomes a hot dog by uh, joining. <laughs> mm. I don't know. I mean, I, I uh, sometimes I get I get I get drawn into conversations. I, I can't remember what that that what was that one guy that kept coming after me on your uh, your one of your videos. What was it? Oh, uh, I forget. No warp something. I can't remember his name. Mm, I can't remember and either. He can't. I mean, I mean, I like having discussions with that, but when it, it's it, it's almost like I was. Uh, it's like it's like look, guy. It, even you know, even if there's a possibility of of aliens, there there's no reason to to, to believe in them. There's no reason to accept it as as true. I, mean, I was just like. Why? Uh, this is yeah. silly. <sighs> I mean, the whole thing grew out of talking about what aliens look like. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I just... <sighs> you know, I, I find those guys really funny because um, it's like they claim they know the truth. And they know because they know. Yeah, and, and, they, and you know, they have this yeah. mountain of evidence, and they talk about it in such general terms, and it's like, mm. well, why don't you pick one of those pieces of mountain of evidence, and let's look at it really closely. Oh, yeah. And see what we, we can, you know, but then, oh, no, don't want to do that. Yeah, it's very true. Can't we, can't we can't examine one of those pieces of evidence up close, because then, oh, we might find a hole in it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> fall apart. The kind of logic they have is, um, well, if there's aliens... Or even the inc uh, inclination that there could be aliens, the possibility of, you know, any way, shape, or form, just the slightest possibility, that it must be our aliens. You know, it can't be yeah, like a different they version. Must it here, must be. They must be doing something. Yeah, they must be doing what we reckon they're doing because we've had, uh, you know, psychics and channelers tell us that the Galactic Federation is doing this or that. Yeah, it's really, really bizarre. And they must look like us. Yeah, yeah. No, but yeah. That's the funny thing, isn't it? All the aliens, they all have, you know, two eyes, one mouth. They have, they have a nose, even if it's only a flat nose with many of them. Uh, but most of them have very, very similar characteristics, two arms, two legs. You very rarely get a non-humanoid alien. And you'd think that, you know, at least they would be the vast majority. 
the vast majority would not be like us. Here's my advice to them. Mm. Go read some H.P. Lovecraft. He had (laughs) wonderful aliens. They yeah. were all shapes and sizes. Some of them look like cones. Some of them look like barrels. Some of them look like flying mushrooms. Yeah, I mean, that makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? That, you know, obviously, I mean, um, I believe that uh, a number of like key speakers, like um, Professor Richard Dawkins has talked about this, that if there is alien life elsewhere in the universe, as obviously many people now considered to be a huge possibility, obviously, that it's going to be, well, it's going to evolve through a Darwinian, um, like, evolutionary process, natural selection. So it's not going to automatically come to be, um, you know, like us. And that's what, you know, a lot of New Agers, you know, a generalisation here, but a lot of New Age people can't seem to really grasp. Because, I suppose, perhaps because many of them don't believe in evolution in the same way. They believe more in um, perhaps some kind of uh, reptilians coming down and then making us human, you know, and then they use it as an excuse. Oh, the aliens, you know, their aliens have been to every planet which they need to go to and they've created all the humanoids. And it turns into really very circular language and a very circular logic. Yeah, well, I think this one guy, he was talking about, oh, well, we don't know all there is about evolution, and often it's uh, the, the, the results are deleterious, and I'm like, well, that, even though there are a lot of deleterious, it means it, it has a negative impact. It means, like, mm. when you, if something evolves, it evolves kind of like a backwards direction. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't evolve to have an advantage. It evolves to, to have a disadvantage, you know? And well, even even mm. though that may be the case, that doesn't mean evolution is not taking place. Absolutely, I think he kind of uh, he's putting across a point, but it's a very poor point because obviously um, variation being what it is, certain traits continue, and he's making the point that evolution is not necessarily forward. I suppose, and he's saying that certain traits aren't necessarily progressive, but the but traits which are evolutionary uh, successful. Uh, they obviously continue as as you would recognise, you know. So, yeah. I think I stick with Duma on this one. <laughs> yeah. It's the guy who wrote the book that La Traviata was uh, based on. So it's got nothing to do with science, but in uh, one instance in the stage play, he says nature is wasteful. And I agree <laughs> That's with very that because true. nature seems to just try out everything and see what lasts. Yeah, whatever works, I think. Definitely, <laughs> and I suppose it it's true. To be successful. They say that, like um, you know, what's it? Uh, as a rough percentage, they say ninety nine point nine nine percent of all life which has ever existed is gone, dead. You know, so the various kinds of bacteria, various forms of, um, you know, whatever, you know, uh, single celled life forms, all the way up to you know something as complex as. Uh, you know, um, some of the larger animals out there, they've all basically died off because of uh, change in variation. So, you know, life is hugely wasteful. It's little wonder that we are so wasteful as a uh, as a global civilization. you know, humanity. We seem to be in the same sort of process, you know, as nature itself. Wasteful and destructive, in a way. Yeah, I think it's nature in itself is probably going to survive because it's a an abstract concept, mm. and we're humans, so we expire. True, true. At least nature keeps itself relatively uh, in check. Like if there's too many foxes breeding, who kill too many rabbits and too many other small creatures, they can't feed themselves. Therefore, the fox population would naturally diminish, or something to that effect. You know, things. Yeah. Uh, keep themselves in relative equilibrium, whereas with, uh, obviously, with humanity, uh, well... We can, we can cheat. We're worse. <laughs> <laughs> we can cheat a little. Yeah. We're not going to get away in the long run. Mm, mm.